Evening, everyone, and welcome to the fans' verdict. So you, you, the fellow fans, get your opinions on the last game, and that is the two-two draw away at Reading at the Select Car Leasing Stadium. Um, joining with me was my uh, esteemed colleague, glamorous assistant as ever, um, Sir Dunk. Evening, mate. Good evening. Made it just in time. Yeah, no, no. Well done, mate. Fantastic. And uh, I hope everyone else as well had a safe journey home um, from, uh, so I'll say the Majeski, but it's obviously not the Majeski now. Yeah, um, it's always been the Majeski. Oh, yeah. It's always got, it's, it's like Cavendish to us um, in Hemel, isn't it? Um, yeah, what, yeah. <laughs> exactly. exactly, mate. I'll just throw out a few comments. Um, Mr. Thorpe, evening, mate. He says, hi, everyone. Mal Williams said, uh, hi, all pretty dire passing today. And evening, guys from Caroline. Yeah, so... Um, like I say, we'll get straight to Dunk in a second. Just big shout out, as always, to the former Players Club um, at www.facebook.com forward slash TaylorMade Players. That's a big shout out to Watford's favourite son, Luther Blissett, and Watford legend Neil Price on that one. Um, yeah, Dunk, uh, you obviously went. I saw it on um, stream. What did you make of that? Oh, how many times have we talked about the referees recently? Too many is my liking. But the problem is, how long How long do you keep blaming the referees before you then look at the squad and say, at this point, yes, you can keep blaming the referees for very questionable decisions, but equally, the squad has to come up and actually not let it impact them as it did today. Because the penalty was one where, if you're Reading, you're saying, oh, he tripped him. If you're Watford, you're saying he ran into him. And if you're on the fence, you'd probably lean into the fact he did run into him and bought the foul, a modern foul if you want to call it that. But then after that, we went to our shells, we didn't try and impose ourselves and we collapsed. It's very frustrating to watch there, especially live. Because I think we had a very weird game. We started off decently, then Reading had a shot very well saved by Backman. And then we got back in control again, got the goal from Saar, half time, and obviously Porteous gets a second. You're thinking, okay, that's exactly what we want. Two nil up. You've taken away the momentum. You just need to do nothing stupid. And then we do something stupid. Pitch. Yeah, yeah. No, I was, I was just reading a couple of the um, comments as well as listening to you, mate, about that. Yeah, yeah. It's an honest assessment. Um, Stuart saying hi, and uh, evening, Stuart. He says hi, boys. Pathetic yet again. We will not make the playoffs. Need a leader on that pitch. And also, um, Emma Raiden. Evening, Emma. She says hi, guys. I haven't seen the highlights yet, but how on earth did we manage to throw away a two 0 advantage? Um, I'll video, probably say also. I just shout out Caroline. She says yet again, what for doing a what for thing, dropping points, and looked at. Um, when they looked home and dry. Um, yeah, I mean, from my my own assessment, uh, I, I, you know, obviously in patches, Reading looked dangerous. I, I was generally frustrated. Yeah. I said this Duncan before we went live. Generally frustrated with the lack of closing down on the edge of our box, especially with the um, save that Batchman did. Um, good save uh, to Tom Ince. I think it was pretty much going wide anyway, but a fantastic save. Uh, and you know, lack of closing down in certain areas, and uh, looking at the second half, I do believe up to the point where they scored the penalty, we were the better side yeah. for most of it. Um, but looking at that penalty, we know what long's like, we know what that Aziz is like. They're both diving cheats, um, as far as I'm concerned, personal view. Uh, and long, long's done this for ages, he dives, he goes in front of you, and he will fall. Um, he knew he wasn't going to get the ball. So he, what instead, what he did, he just ran into the player. But what he does, he cuts in front of you. And to be honest, he wasn't taken down. He literally tripped over the player, but he made it look like he was taken out. Um, I'm on the video here, yeah, I wish. Yeah, I'll flash that up. Yeah, I'll flash that up now, mate. But um, the way we, uh, and also, mate, the way we, way we crumbled at the end, and like you said, you know, we got into our shells. To be fair on Bilic, and you look at that now, look, he's just run into him. But to be fair on Bilic, he brought on two attacking players to try and finish this game off. And I'd like to go on also about that decision where, like you said, in hindsight, it was offside. But at the time, and the way the re way the decision was made, the keeper ran over to him, started crying, and the decision was reversed. And I just think that it really 
really, really bad officiating from that point of view. Okay, we didn't do ourselves any any favours from yeah. you know so it was the right decision. The yeah, problem is when you, when I was when I was looking at it because I was in the I was pretty much at the corner flag. So you see Lumley come over after he's and he's waving his arm. I think he was I think he was doing an offside motion with it. And normally you see a player go over, they make a token protest and it's sort of waved away. And it looked like that originally. But then it went a little bit more in depth than usual, almost a consultation. And then the referee goes with the Linos decision. So that's what it boiled down to. So when we but the worst thing as a fan is that you're seeing it. And you know how normally if it's given offside, let's say VAR gives you offside. They normally give you an offside sort of gesture so that you know why they've called it. They never did that. So when you look when you're there in your way end, you see the keeper go over. He, and it looks like he's pressuring the officials to overturn it, which, whilst it was the right decision, that's what it looked like to the fan. And when that happens, sorry, and when that uh, was then overturned, they never said it was offside. They never motioned it was offside. It was like, okay, we'll overturn it. And that was really poor. There was no communication outside of the keeper almost linesman and the referee as to actually what why they was overturned that's really what really got under my skin there yeah yeah i do, I do agree and like i've already said that uh long's done that and a few other players do it as well but he gets in front of players knowing full well that if he runs into him he's he's probably going to get a penalty to be honest i thought that that was never a penalty in a million years um and i agree with Stuart. it's never a penalty kafkart was or man of the match first stuff. I thought Kafka was, Kafka was in the front match of anyway. Long on the replay. Hmm? That's in Kafka, when you see the replays in front of Long. Long runs into the back of him. Yeah, yeah. But not, that's what Long does. He, he'll run into you, so then he'll fall over. It looks like a penalty from the angle of the ref. Thing is, to be honest, the the one the f one penalty shot they had was more of a penalty than that one. To be fair, when I looked at the replay of that one, it was like, cool, we got away with that. And then obviously he's trying <laughs> to even it out, wasn't he? Um, Mel saying good debut for the new players. Uh, yeah, Michael, I'll come to that in that. a minute as well. Um, we've also got, yeah, so we've got never a penalty. Uh, what else? Um, yeah, he says, we aren't streetwise. We are ex-premier. Every team wants to beat us. Uh, they aren't VAR. These are average refs. I don't buy into that. Um, Michael said, how many points will we get in the next two games? Because he's obviously, we know this, but he said, we've got two big games coming up. What do you reckon? I mean, it's really hard to judge it at the moment because we're so inconsistent. Even, not game by game, but five minute by five minute, if you want to call it that, during games. We just have no... I agree with Robbie Allen, two points dropped. Completely mm. agree with that. Yes, same. That's really how it feels because there's very, very rarely any time you feel okay losing a two-goal lead anyway. So it's always going to be feel like two points drop, no matter what the circumstances were around it. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I, I, Stuart said, ha, but we ain't going to make playoffs. Uh, we ain't consistent enough. As uh, Mooney said on Hive, we've won 12 out of 13 games to, to make the playoffs. This squad can't string a, a piss straight, let, let alone a, a, a running, <laughs> winning streak. Uh <laughs> well, exactly. Um, Woody, evening, mate. He says, hi, right, guys. Hi, right, everyone. Um, yeah, look, Gary, Gary's thrown a good point up as well. And um, let me, I'll finish off this assessment. Like I say, we the last, tw uh, you know, as soon as they scored that goal, it changed the complete complexity of that game. You know, Reading had the tails up. I know I'm stating the obvious, and this is what we all viewed at the game or not at the game, we all watched it live. So we all could see this happening. It changed the complete complexity of the game. Their tails were up. They could see, they can smell blood. They could see gaps opening in, in us. We looked less organised as well. It happens with teams, but we were all over the shop. We were literally just trying to fight fires and, and put band-aids over massive cuts in terms of our organisation. 
And um, you could only see one outcome. Obviously, we hoped it would finish 2-1. But, yeah, after 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 they scored that goal, I said, we. Re- I'm thinking, well, I really fear for us because I could see them either getting another penalty or possibly a goal. But, sadly, it actually um, happened. Uh, the scum are above us now with a game in hand. Yeah, that uh, probably hurts even more, mate, to be fair. Uh, mm. Four hard games coming up, in fact. That's from Mel. Um I'd, ra- I'd rather we didn't make the playoffs. That's from Robbie. Uh, did not see the game. That's from Woody. He said, but but throw it away from 2-0 up. Uh, yeah, let's quickly, Dave, I'll come to that question in a minute. Evening, mate. We'll go to this one from um, Gary. And I want everyone's opinion on how many points we're going to get in the next um, two to four games. You could do two or you could do four. It's up to you guys. I personally believe, because we're so woefully inconsistent, I'm going to say four, because I know this was just one of these things. It's either going to be it's either going to be one point or it's going to be four. I'm going to go for four, but it's probably completely delusional by myself. Um, I just think how woefully inconsistent we are. We'll probably put in a couple of decent performances and come away unbeaten in those two games, but Hey ho, um, yeah, D- um, Duncan. He says, um, Gary, saying, do you reckon? Uh, do you guys reckon Bilic is under pressure, especially with the games coming up now, because he knows what he has to do, and just feel, um, will will we will we'll feel short, we will come yeah. up short for the playoffs? What do you reckon, mate? I was hoping he comes to that one because Bilic, he set us up right with to start with today, but he then made progressively wor- worse decision sorry made progressively worse decisions as the game went on with substitutions and setup i think davis and araho i can never pronounce it sorry araho no, pronounce it i'll put araho but there you go yeah he looks really bright he he's very good at finding pockets of space. And it sounds simple, but it's really not, especially in the championship when you can get absolutely clattered if you're not if you're trying to do that. But he held his own. He found pockets of space. He was very dangerous. I think he will get goals. I'm really positive about him. He looks a really good player to my eye. He had the you can see he had the intelligence of movement. And he can't coach that. And he mm. and he what I liked was, I remember twice in the second half where the centre-back hauled him down and the referee didn't give anything. However, it didn't phase him. Obviously, he was pissed off at the decision not being given, but he just got up, got on again. And I really like that. There's no sulking. There's no moping. It's like, all right, reset, go again. It sounds really minor. But if you lose the ball, or so we lose the ball from that, we then get a turnover. You want the players ready to go, and he would be ready to go again. That's a good point, mate, actually. And, um, but, uh, Gary's also said, I feel, I feel we should have stuck with Edwards. We should have been patient because look what he's doing for the scum. Um, Woody's saying, come and watch a proper football team. Um, the ladies are playing tomorrow. Um, yeah, good luck to the women's team um, tomorrow. Back in league action, I believe. So good luck to them. We'll obviously we'll throwing out some results, lineups, and everything else we can um, throw out for them. Um, if we don't win the next two games, I reckon Billets will either walk or get the sack. Um, who would you bring in to give us a push for promotion? Dice would have been perfect. Uh, look, I agree with Gary. We should we should stick um, with thing. I I don't think for one minute we should get rid of Billets. I think it's the best we can get. Uh, uh, honestly, honestly believe that you know we we have to stick with him we have to you know all this rubbish about once we're on a bad run we've got a sack managers you know it's it's started to create a sense of entitlement between a certain batch of um our fans which look they're completely 110 percent entitled to their opinion and wherever or not i agree or disagree with it but i do believe this constant sacking of managers is starting to open this up and you get too much as soon as we're on a bad run you get too many people on social media um saying that we need to sack him uh, there has been a few people especially on twitter which like i say once again they're entitled to say um but yeah we need to stick by him definitely i do believe he's the best th- best we can get at the moment and so he's a fantastic coach and what he's had to deal with is actually horrendous in terms of um, injuries. They are slowly coming back. Once mm. we get all the players back, 
And if we're still being poor, then we either blame the players or you or obviously Billets will take a portion of that blame. But at the moment, we're trying to trying to fight fires and trying to get all the players back. So the, the true assessment of how Billets is going to do is still not there yet. But I, I don't believe um, we would have been any better off with Edwards, to be fair, even though at the time when he left, I wanted him to stay. But sorry, Dunk, go on. You were sharing that's that, right. mate. Yeah, that's all right. It's just showing the um, first 11 we started saying the bench we had. So going back to Bilic, I feel like I would not have started Bakunia. I feel like that was a very poor idea. I'd have, I would have had Kone or... I was going to say Spria, but I just realized that's not even on the bench. So in which case, I would definitely have had Kone ahead of Bakunia. Because one of the big problems we had today was distribution from defence to midfield. And that's been a really common theme of our, of our season so far. Porteous and Cathcart between them, Porteous particularly... They're quite good passes of the ball for this level, particularly Porteous. He comes with a pedigree, actually. He's quite well known from Scotland to actually being a progressive centre-back, someone who can carry the ball, make a solid pass, or otherwise help link the defence and midfield. But having both Chowdhury, as we know, defensively, he's a monster. And I know I said it before, I'd have him for six million at the end of the season. But we also know that his forward passing play is very limited. It's sideways or back, and he doesn't have the forward pass in, which is fine if you can work around it with the other personnel. But when you have Bakuna next to him, who is not as defensively everywhere as Chowdhury, but also isn't good enough to provide a solid link between the midfield and attack, you might as well have Kone on, who at least is very good at bringing the ball forward and linking the attack and midfield. So I think that was quite an important overlooked error from Bilic today in our setup. Mm. And I, Martins, I understand him starting, and I've expected a lot from Martins given his pedigree, but I feel like he does what Saar does when he gets frustrated and just falls to the floor too much. There are quite a few times where Martins was legitimately fouled at times, but compared to Araujo, who got up, gets on with it, Martin stays on the floor a lot. And, and it's not always embellished, but sometimes, sometimes it is where they're trying to win a foul, they don't get it, but rather than getting up and moving on, they're still trying to make something of it. And at that point, it's frustrating as a family just when you can see there's potentially something from a turnover in possession and they're still moping. That's the one thing I can't stand from any players when they're moping, when they haven't got a decision. Mm. Yeah, um, looking at that, looking at the lineup as well, mate. Uh yeah, I I, I look. I posted it up straight away, and I said, "Why the hell is Bakuna playing in front of uh, instead of Kone? Um, Kone, Kone and Chowdhury is our definite centre midfield pairing. Obviously, sticking loser in that in a three, but mm. eventually we need to have a three at the back with Hoyt, um, Hoyt Portius, Cathcart. and uh, Portius yeah. and yeah, and Cathcart. I think you know it's nice That's to have actually." British yeah. players at the back rather than, you know, it's not a big thing. Oh, we've got a load of foreigners, but it's nice to have a British base. Um, we need to try and get a British spine as well, which would be nice um, in there. And that certainly starts it. So we can go to a back three. Uh, look, oh, oh, there's a debate as well, mate. Kafka or Kamara, um, Kafka, Kamara or Morris or Maurice, as um, Woody would say. Um, <laughs> personally, Personally, I, I still go for Morris. Kamara is a very good player, but he's very erratic in how he plays. Uh, but I would I would I would have Morris. He's the future. You know, Kamara's gonna go back to Danese in the summer. Mm. So we need to look long term. And I think Morris, we need to play Morris a bit more. Uh, to be honest, uh, with Bakuna, I would have had Greavesy in the head of him rather than um Bak playing Bakuna. I just don't I I've got no confidence in Bakuna. Kone should have started. Bakuna could come off the yeah. bench. 
I think like yeah. you, I agree with it. Was a, it was a strange decision bringing him on. He did the job at the time when he came in. He's a free transfer. We've got midfield options now. Uh, but looking at that bench, when at the start of the game, before all this happened, you look at you look at that bench, and it's a pretty decent bench ball accounts. You know, you've got the youth there, you've got centre backs, you've got Joel Pedro, Morris, Asabalongo. So you it is a strong attacking bench there as well. So we did have for once we can look at that bench and say, look, we have got options that could change potentially change the game. But he was just, I, I, like I say, I'll give credit to Bilic again, put, bringing two forwards there to try and um, finish the game off. It just, you know, on another day, it would have finished 3-1. Mm. And, you know, we'd be looking at it and be a masterstroke. But, you know, you always judged on your judged on your subs and your selection, like you very well said. You know, you can blame the players especially. But Bilic um, has got to look at this and say, look, did he get it wrong today? Um, you know, and I'm not one to always blame the manager. But, um, what, you know, what do you reckon, mate? Do you, I think it's probably more of he got it wrong today in terms of the overall game management. Uh, so let's take, let's break down step by step. Going back to the first point you made about the formation, whether you go Morris or Kamara, if we're playing three at the back, you said earlier, if you had Hoyt, Kafka and Porteous, I'd have Kamara because his his ability on the ball when moving it forward, and he did it quite a few times today, Kamara is better than Morris actually carrying it forward under pressure. But if you're playing four at the back and you need more of a balance, you need someone who's defensively reliable as well as someone who can put a decent cross in, but albeit not as physically adept, then I'd go Morris. They aren't swap straight swap for swap. They both have their own strengths and weaknesses there as for your next point going for the general lineup as we talked about earlier we agree on Bakuna and Kone when I look at the bench I'd actually say it's a little bit unbalanced you've, you've got Pedro Asambalonga Adeyemo that's three sort of strikers almost would you count Pedro as a striker or a winger either way He's, he's, he's both, and he really he can play yeah, top as well, can But the problem is, you've only got one midfield, central midfielder in Kone. So, as you said earlier, why not maybe have Greaves as another option instead of either, instead of Adiemo, perhaps, if you've already got Pedro and Sambalonga? I just feel like if it's fitness, then fair enough. You could, Bilic can't do anything about that. But I feel like he could have given himself a little bit more to play with on the bench by sacrificing Adiemo or even a Sombolonga, depending if you think as he was ready yet. Mm. Either way, I just feel like that it's not like there's the lineup was a million miles off. It wasn't. But you would say, how about this person, this person? It's frustratingly close, but not quite. Mm. Yeah, as Mr. Higgins saying, need youngsters. We aren't going up. Majority of parachute money comes next season. Play them, would um, mould them. The Jack Greaves are our future. Um, what is everyone's best eleven when players are fit? We'll come to that in a second. Um, yeah, Woody saying, Maurice, all the laugh out loud all day long. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. Right, yeah, go on, and you. Uh, actually, I'm going to get this prepared. So if you go first, I'll get this prepared in the background. Yeah, um, Dave's saying, but will he walk, please? This is in terms of Billich. Um, he's already looks fed up. Maybe Dean Smith. Look, if um, if he does walk, and obviously I'm not one to say he needs to go because I personally are Billich in. And I do think, you know, like Stuart says, give him, give him time, give him transfer windows, get him to bring, get rid of the uh, dead wood, as we would say and mould a team um, to fit his ideology, then, yeah, I, I completely believe we've got the right guy. If he does walk and, he, you know, the playing devil's advocate, if he does walk, then someone, yeah, someone like, De someone like Dean Smith or Chris Wilder, personally, um, will probably, would be would be okay. But, yeah, no, 110% beyond Billich. I really do think he's the guy to get us up there. And he's got Premier League experience as well. We just need to make sure this Ben Manga project uh, carries on rolling. We still have got clear vision on who we're signing. 
obviously work alongside Bilic um, in terms of what sort of players, what sort of type of player will fit um, this system and, the, you know, all these little factors. But we need, he needs to carry on working with Bilic, keep him sweet, keep him happy. Um, keep the keep the like say the recruitment rolling, we should be okay. But yeah, I agree with Stuart. You know, definitely give him at least another couple of transfer windows to really see um what he can do. Um, yeah, everyone's best 11 when players are fit. If anyone wants to comment this, we've got about another five minutes to the end of the show, but I'll get Dunk to comment on this first and see if he can get it off straight off the bat. But um, yeah, your best 11 guys. Um, also, your man of the matches. Firstly, Dunk, um, put this out. Man of the matches. My two, um, I've got two. Porteous for his debut goal. I thought he was excellent today. And also mm -hmm. Kafkart. I did shout Kafkart, so I have to stay stick with that. I thought Kafkart was um, solid once again. It was very unlucky for the penalty, but it's, yeah, it's a toss-up between that. those two, mate. Mm, yeah. If you, if you press between those two, I'd actually lean towards Porteous. Of those two, I definitely lean towards Porteous. If you're talking about the strongest team we can put out, assuming we do what Bilic has openly said he'd prefer, which is four at the back, then we go for a 4 2 3 1 formation. So we'd have, I'd go Batman in goal, that's the lockdown position. I'd go, as we both said earlier, I'd actually go Morris at left back, go either, I, I'm I'm torn between Hoyt or Kafka at left centre back. Either or I'd go Kafka because he's more we he's more of a known quantity at this level, so we'll go Kafka for now there. Next to him, Porteous. At right back, I go Ferreira. I think Ferreira offers more going forward than Gaspar. Although I think Gaspar had a solid game, actually, a really solid game. So it's not a straight cut out there. Then the easy choice is loser and Chowdhury in front of the defence. That's the, probably the easiest choice of the lot there. You've got Kone ahead of them. And then at left wing, you've got Pedro. Right wing, Sa or vice versa, either way. Then Davies up top. Although, would you actually replace Davies with Aroha up front? Do you think Davies has been under, underperforming too much recently in, in front of goal? Mm-hmm. Yeah, That's it's hard one. Well, yeah, personally, what I would do, yeah, I'd play, could possibly play that, could possibly adapt it to a 4 3 3, but I'll stick with what you said, your formation. So, I'll, yeah, a Backman 110% as without a, with a given. I look, there he is. He's relaxing, yeah. chillaxing, shall we say. He's happy. He's a chill dog, definitely. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Um, pillar abuse. Right, yeah, so I've got left back, obviously, Morris, Porteous and Cathcart. Um, You could move one of them for Hoyt. Right back, uh, Mr. Roche himself. We've got Chowdhury and Kone. Stick loser right in front of them. Then you've got okay. Pedro and Saar, and then probably someone like Davis um, up front. Or you put Martins, drop Davis, um, put your thing. But you've got two or three that can play up front, so... Tricky, but Gossip definitely Gossip. loser Chowdhury and Kone as a midfield three. Mm -mm. So if you're going for, in fact, would you then go four four two? Then, as we did earlier today, have Davis Aroha up front. You'd have loser and either Chowdhury or Kone, probably Chowdhury, next to them. You'd have Sand left wing, Pedro right wing, and Pedro would roam anyway as he does. And then, as you said, the back four we had earlier. Mm. Yeah, no. I'll, yeah, you could do that. Um, four four two a bit more difficult for me to work out, but you could easily do that. You could easily put um, him and Davis or him and Asim Malongo up front, Erosia and um, Asim Malongo as well, just see how he kicks off. But yeah, uh, I mean, if you you could play a five in midfield and sit Greavesy in there for a few cameos because it will look a bit more confident if he has two players alongside him. But yeah, like Stuart said, Greavesy. And uh, Adamayo are the future. We've got one or two other players, you know, especially centre backs that are looking, uh, looking likely to push on next season. So mm. I think if we're not get, uh, obviously 110, percent I want us to get promoted. But if we don't, then yeah, that's the formation. It's it's diff more difficult to pick our forward line than it is the midfield and the um, defence. To be fair, I think that's pretty much nailed yeah. down with what me and you have been saying. 
Yeah, you've got. I think what's the fun of that full exercise is that you've got quite a few valid choices, assuming everyone's available. I think for the most part, Billich actually did reasonably well with who was available today. And it was also the right decision to only bring on Pedro for the last 15, 20, because you want to ease in the fitness and avoid overloading in too early. So I think Billich did the right thing there, not bringing Pedro too early and trying to force something there. Yeah. So I will give Billich credit on that one. Mm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, you live in Darbo, this your decisions, and in some cases he, he got it wrong. But I think all in all, I was quite encouraged by the fact that he wanted to, rather than sit the game out and try and defend, which would probably have this exactly same outcome and could have been worse, he tried to push on and treat the, um, you know, the, the same where the best form of defence is attack. So he tried to f um, finish the game try to make, remain positive. So I'll give him kudos for that, definitely. Um, Stuart, I completely agree, Miss. Yet again, no youth. Um, that's in reference to our formations. I think that's what he's going to go for this season. But look, 100% Greavesy, I really rate that kid. I think he's absolutely amazing kid. Adameu, um, you've got the other lad who plays up front, Puku. Is it Puku? Which one? Oh, I know. Um, yeah, I can't think how to pronounce it, but I know who you mean. Yeah, I can't pronounce it properly, so I do apologise for the really bad pronunciation. But you've got Puku, you've got Adameo, you've got Greavesy, um, you've got the Australian centre-back that looks really, really decent um, at youth level as well. And we've got some fantastic youngsters coming through. Jono, Jimmy, you know, Richard, um, Daniels, um, Omar, good friend of the show as well. You know, there are many, many of the coaches doing a fantastic job there. And Stuart, I completely agree, mate. Start the season, I said we should bring the youth through you know, four or five youth players, not necessarily start them all, but start giving them cameos and during the end of the season, they'll all be playing and really, really build from the ground up, build solid foundation. So if we did go up, and I've said this many times, that we don't have the embarrassment of last time. That's the only thing that worries me. If we do go on this run, say win the playoffs and then we go up, that's going to really be an acid test because I can't see Bilic lasting long if we don't have a backup plan. It'll be like Isco. I think, uh, yeah, Adu Poku. Yeah, there we go, mate. No, cheers. Cheers, mate. Um, they, yeah, that lad as well. So, yeah, def look, look, 100%. I'm completely with you, Stuart. Long term, I'm looking for the, I'm looking at the youth. I really do. I think that's the future. That's a solid base we need to start from. And like I said, I'd rather have Greasy playing than Bakuna. I don't mean to be horrible to Bakuna because he came in, he'd done a job when he's asked of him. He hasn't set the world alight. But yeah, Greavesy, 110%. We need to give him more cameos. Even the last 10 minutes, you know, bring him on. You know, no one knows about him. You know, Adameo as well, same thing. Let's, let's bring him on. Let's be a bit brave and uh, bring these players on because, you know, they are the future. Same with Morris. We've been playing him at le playing in left back. I do believe he's um, he's the future, certainly. But um, yeah, I'm waffling on again, Dunk. But um, that's right. Stuart's point about the youth, you know, it, it is the. You know, it's the future of the club. We have seen in recent weeks, obviously, with the injury record, that they have been making their mark. Um, you know, there's more eyes turning to the youth of the club as well, um, especially with the Everton result. You know, I think they've got Arsenal on Monday as well, which would be a fantastic game. So, um, at the moment, the future's looking bright, isn't it? Hello? Yeah, I can hear you, mate. Okay, dropped out for a moment. So that dropped out for about two, three seconds there. Do you mind repeating? Yeah, yeah. I was just saying the future future's looking bright in terms of the youth, isn't it? Yeah, so it's nice having some valid options come through. Adiemo got more minutes again in the last 10, 15. And you say you've got Greaves, who's highly rated. Aganelli, who actually went to Brentford B for more minutes, actually was very promising as well. It's a bit of a shame, but understandable why he, why he decided to move on. Adupoku, I'm hopeful. I'm not, I don't, I haven't seen as much from him as, as I have from the others. Even Blake as well. What happened to Blake? That's another one as well, if you remember. Yeah, very good player. So it's nice having some options we can be excited about, again, coming through the ranks. Even, and Hungbo as well, who's gone to Huddersfield. It's, we'd... It's always nice having youth players coming through, but it's important to actually give them meaningful minutes in a 
not just a development league, but in actual men's football, because as cliche as it sounds, if you're playing development football, then the worst case is you have you have a hit to the pride when you lose. If you're playing men's football in lower leagues, someone's if a bonus down there for a win means a hell of a lot more, and you will be needing to be on it. Whereas if you're in a development league, if you're not on it, it hasn't got the same consequences. It's not got the same. I don't like to use character building. That isn't quite the word for it, but it doesn't give the same consequence and a need to develop the mentality for the men's game. Mm. Yeah, it's true, mate. Very true. Um, just a, a final comment before we go, guys and girls, and just like I say, massive shout out to all of you. You're absolute legends. Thank you ever so much. Just remember tomorrow night, um, TMA Sunday Night Live will put out the put out the usual thread to get your topics through. We will discuss as many as we can. Um, there will be a limit. So first come, first served. We'll put I'll put it out around um 10 o'clock in the morning. Get your topics through. We'll be putting it on Twitter as well. So quickly, you guys on the forum, you will get it first. So make sure you put your comments out. But um, Stuart saying, um, final thing before we go, mate. Um, was watching football Fergus earlier. Ben, ben Wilmot was on. Um, maybe wrong. Uh, I'm wrong, but could really um, could not really listen to interview. But I applauded him. I think he was saying he was gay. Can anyone elaborate on that? I haven't um, seen anything about that. I mean, tell you what. My initial thing, if it's if it is, then absolute fair play to the lad. Well, hmm. There shouldn't be any shame in being gay. Um, I know it's a, still a big taboo in football. Hopefully it won't be soon. You know, it doesn't make you a worse or better player. If that's what he is, um, straight, gay or whatever, good on him. Fair play to him. And um, very best of luck to Ben, if that's the um, if that's the case, Stuart, mate. I'm not just saying that. Well done to him. Fair play for him coming out. It must be really, really, really hard for him coming out, mate. But, um, yeah, what do, you reckon, what do you reckon of that just before we shoot off? Yeah, pretty much. For it. It's very much live and let live. It doesn't matter what your alignment is, one way or the other. All that matters is, in football, all that matters is how well can he hit a ball and how well can he play. Whether you're gay, straight, or otherwise, isn't our business. And if you're willing to come out and try and not just awareness, but actually try and make it more inclusive, then absolutely fair play. Hmm. Absolutely, mate. I'll tip my hat off to anyone who comes out in, you know, not even just gay, just any situation like that. And we're not just doing that to be all bow to the masses and make sure everyone nods, nods their head to, you know, to what we're saying. Well done. Um, his brother's gay. Maybe it was about that. It could possibly be about that, Terry. Yeah, no, because I know his brother's gay, so it could have been about that. But fair play to his brother as well. Either way. Yeah, either way, it's, you know, he's, um, that's really good. And, uh, I, you know, the interview, I'll certainly catch up on that and see what that's about. So, you know, good shout out, Terry. Um, just a shout out for Terry as well while he's here. Um, he, they're one of our official partners alongside Funky Monkey Discos and uh, Gadsden Tattoos. Um, official partners, the InReach Group, um, eSupply office photocopies and printers um as well as telephone systems we can offer they well we, in fact they can offer hospitality tickets to any new customers always happy to run a no obligation cost comparison against companies current costs um and if anyone um wants a quote uh email Terry P at inreachgroup.co.uk. Um, we obviously will flash it up during the pods. And massive shout out to um, what Terry did for me, old man, a couple of weeks ago for his birthday. So um, thank you very much, Tell. Um, top, top man. Um, still a person. That's at the end of the day, that's all it is. And like Duncan said, doesn't matter. Um, it doesn't make you a better or worse footballer. You're still a person, still a human being, and you should be respected for your beliefs. So yeah, absolutely, uh, absolutely spot on there. Um, now, definitely, mate. Um, yeah, so we'll see you tomorrow. Um, get on over to Tanner Made Army Forum and also Tanner Made Army TV on uh, YouTube. Like, share, subscribe, and also click the notification bell as always for the latest live weekly content. Dunk, mate, any last words, mate? And also, thank you very much for um, speeding back from Reading and uh, coming on, mate. Uh, means a lot, fella. Cheers. Yeah, no, I'm just, honest, I'm just glad I made it back in time, to be honest. Um... Thankfully, it's not the longest way trip in the world. Yeah, it's just frustrating times at the moment, really. I know I've said this quite a few times before on the podcast, but all we can do is just try and get behind the team and try and avoid being 
too negative when we're at the games, really. If we lose or draw off the game, it's fine to vent there. But when you're at the games, just try and get behind as best you can.